Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and this is an advanced tutorial on Swing GUI programming in Java and uh, in fact it's the second tutorial in the series and in the last tutorial we looked at creating a basic um, Swing app um, with no components on it, just a basic frame here and in this tutorial we're going to add some components to this frame so I'm going to go at quite a pace here because I'm going to try to fit this into roughly 10 minutes if possible. Firstly, you need to create a um, custom version of JFrame. So I'm going to create, I'm going to call this main frame. I'm going to make that extend JFrame. Finish. And because I want to slot that in here and because I'm using this constructor that takes a string I'll just implement that constructor here as well. So I'll say public main frame string title and I'll just call super title here. Okay, and then I'll slot that in here. So instead of J frame, I'll create a main frame. And that should function just as before. And but what I can now do is I can add components here. And there are three kind of stages to adding components into a swing frame. First, you need to set the layout manager, and the layout manager is what decides um, how to arrange your components on the frame. Then you need to create swing components. And finally, you need to add your swing components to the, um, not the JFrame directly, but to its content pane. So, um, now, in the next tutorial, we will look at um, advanced kind of um, an advanced layout manager grid bag layout that's very flexible. But in this tutorial, I'm just going to use a really simple layout called I'll do set layout and I'll say new border layout. And border layout just lets you add components um, to the um, top, bottom, left, right, and center of the frame. So, really, it's just intended to build up. A kind of basic frame where you where you might have a big panel in the center and you might have a toolbar at the top and that kind of thing um, but here I'm just going to use it because it's it's simple and I'm going to have two swing components here I'm going to create a J text area text area which is a big area where you can type text equals new J text area and swing components usually start with a J and then the second letter is also capitalized and I'll have a J button button which you can guess what that is equals new J button and I'll say here in the constructor I'll specify the text that I want to put on the button I'll just say click me and as, at this point I want to briefly take a diversion to tell you about three web pages if you go to Google and type window builder pro you'll find there's actually an Eclipse plugin that lets you visually design swing components, uh, sorry, swing um, applications. But um, I, I don't know if you could create swing applications just using this. You'll probably at least find it useful to know how to do this uh, manually anyway. But this is great. It's an Eclipse plugin and it lets you switch between your code and the visual representation of it. So certainly um, install that. And then um, if you type um, visual guide swing layout into Google you get a visual guide to the different layout managers and um, actually you can mostly get by um, and all the Java programmers are known including myself tend actually just to use um, a layout manager called grid bag layout um, here um, no sorry here which is um, the most flexible of the layout managers and you can pretty much use that for nearly everything but it's helpful to know one or two of the others as well and finally uh, if you type swing visual guide into Google then you get a guide to all the different swing components that you can use and um, if you click on these links you can um, get kind of code that shows you how to use them which is incredibly useful and we're using this text area here as well as um, a J button which is here okay so back to this um, I've created I've set the layout 
I've created my components. I'm going to add them to the content pane. So I'm got the content pane as type container. I'm going to call it C. I wouldn't normally use, um, sorry, not get container, but get content pane. Um, so to get the content pane, which you add the components to, call get content pane, call that method of JFrame. And um, the content pane has type container. And I'm calling it C here. I wouldn't normally um, use just one letter for a variable, but because I might need to type this over and over again, and it's pretty clear what it is, I'm going to just give it a one letter name here. And then to add the components, you just type C.add. It's pretty simple. And then you need to, um, in the case of border layout, you need to um, specify a constant of the border layout class, static constant. That specifies where the where the container container where the component should go, and so I want to put the the text area in the center. So I'll say border layout dot center, and the um, button I want to put at the bottom of the pane. So I can say border layout dot south to add it to the bottom. And there's a bunch of um, different const constants in border layout. There's page start and page end, which I think just adds to the um, top of the frame and the bottom. Line start, line end adds to the left and right, but you can also use north, south, east and west kind of compass points as well. And uh, so um, now I just need to do control shift O to add the import for the container. And uh, if I run this, I will get this. I've got my button here and I've got my text area here that I can type stuff in. Now I'm just going to add quickly um, to finish up this tutorial um, something that will respond to the button click here. So I can say kind of add um, behavior here and to detect when a button is clicked I call button j, j button dot add action listener and the action listener expects a class that implements the action listener interface. So I'll type action listener here. Um, I'll say here, new action listener. I'm going to use an anonymous class to, um, to listen to this button. And I put round brackets here and do control shift O to add the import. And then I'll, I'll open a curly brace here because this is just an interface. It's not a class and I need to implement um, the kind of me the um, methods that the interface specifies in here. So I'll click on this and um, uh, well I need to import it. Uh, it didn't do that evidently. And then if I click on it again, it'll say add unimplemented methods. And it's just got one method here, action performed. And this is called when your button is clicked. And what I'm going to do just to demonstrate this working is I can say text area dot set text so actually there's also an append text append and I'll say append hello and I'll put a new line in here with slash n as well just to make it a bit more interesting and nicer and the reason I'm getting an area um, an error here is because of course if you have an anonymous class you can't refer to local variables unless they are final so I could either add this text area um, up here is an instance variable but the, the quickest thing to do is just declare it final here so it's constant and now I can refer to it so if I run this um, now if I click this button it adds text to my text area okay so that's it for this tutorial um, I've covered really a lot of stuff here um, I'm going to put this code on caveofprogramming.com so you can look at it at your leisure and try to customize it if you want to and um, as I say in the next tutorial, we will look at grid bag layout, which lets you kind of add components more flexibly. And in particular, it will fix this problem of the fact that the button has just expanded to take up all available size, all the size that's available to it here, which isn't ideal, ideal for a button. OK, so um, join me again for the next tutorial. And uh, as I say, this will be on this code will be on caveonprogramming.com. And until next time, happy coding.